Welcome. This is Money Heart, where we explore the emotional side of money. I'm Camille Diaz, and today we're discussing There is Always Enough. My guest is Mary Maduna Gross. Dr. Mary Maduna Gross is a heart centered business leadership coach and educator. She believes that we are happiest when we honor our inner strengths and gifts by using them to make life better for others. She knows that it takes a great deal of courage and self-compassion to let go of the old stories that no longer serve us so that we can experience the highest version of ourselves. Mary has been teaching, leading, and coaching others on their journey for more than 30 years. She supports conscious entrepreneurs who struggle with self-doubt and lack clarity of purpose. With her guidance, her clients align with their inner power so they can make the world a better place through their business, establish a satisfying culture within their organization, and manage profits so they can make an even bigger impact. Mary, welcome to Money Heart. Oh, thank you. I am so excited to be here. Yes, I'm excited to have you on the show. And I love that piece that you have in the beginning of your bio of using your strengths and your gifts and all of that stuff um, to make life better for others. I feel like that has been my personal mission for the last few years is to use all of my gifts to teach others to build themselves. And so I'm like, oh, I feel like we're so aligned. And uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, I do also love the tiara that we well, sure. you chose tiaras for today. And I was like oh since when is it not a good day to wear a tiara like every day seriously right yes <laughs> exactly and we've got to have bring more fun so more I, love fun. The, I love the invitation to even consider what do you want to wear you know let's thank you let's, let's bring some play into this yes. that was amazing i loved it yes 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 I, it's um it is just one of those things that is authentically me. I actually have pictures from me at like four years old wearing costumes and posing on the couch being Come all on. like, oh, check me out. You know? Right. <laughs> Which is very weird because I was such a super shy child. And really? yet I love dressing up and I love costumes and I love wearing fun stuff or like big earrings or tiaras yeah. and all of this kind of deal. So um, when I started the show, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this and we'll see what happens. It's been fabulous. <laughs> Good for you. Embrace the play. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much, um, so interesting how our brains work differently when we let ourselves play a little bit. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So I love this concept that we're talking about today about there is always enough. Yeah. Um, you kind of had a, a couple of core beliefs early on that you have since resolved, which is why we're talking. And mm -hmm. one of them was there is never enough. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about that. How is that impacting you? What, what was going on? Yeah. So I, my early childhood experiences, I grew up on a farm mm -hmm. um, out in the middle of the country. And so my going to school was great because that's when I got to, to be with my friends. And when I wasn't at school, I was working. I was working on the farm and I loved it. I, I love that that's my childhood. And some of the beliefs, though, that I picked up from that is this idea that there's never enough because in farming, just and I'm learning now that this is true in entrepreneurship as well. Right. There's so many variables outside of your control, the weather, the markets, um, whether your equipment is going to be working or not and how much do you have to invest in that. You know, those are all things that I, I had nothing to do with. Um, and yet I was I could observe it and I saw my parents really, you know, do every, absolutely everything they could to, how do I want to say this? Um, to thrive. I mean, that's what we're all here to do, right? We're yeah. all here thriving. And yeah, I, I just saw them struggling. And so I started to pick up on this belief. And again, I'm not conscious of it at the time, but the, the messages I was getting and I don't mean I'm I'm necessarily they're telling me this. It's mostly me interpreting the experiences, yeah, and right? We don't have to. That's the that's the weird thing about kids is as adults when we have kids we don't realize how much of our behavior and our unspoken stuff gets translated and yeah. it sinks into their brain and gets held onto and becomes a core belief for them. We and that's not at all what we were trying to do. It just does. It's so weird. 
It is. It is. And so I really want to make sure, especially when I'm telling these stories, that I the, it, there's no criticism, right? There's no judgment in it. Right. These are my experiences. And what the meaning I was making out of it is that there isn't enough, right? So um, we would go grocery shopping once a month. And if we ran out of food, we uh, towards the end of the month, we we had less food to eat, right? Until it was the time to go shopping again. Um, when we bought a new, when back to school, you know, we would get a few new things, but then it was like, take care of your stuff because you're not getting anything new until next year kind of a thing. Um, and so I, I just had this sense that, okay, whatever I got, this is all I'm getting. Mm. And now be happy with what you've got and, um, but don't expect more. Uh, and so just do what you can with what you've got. And, and I think that again, that's such a typical rural farmer, you know, kind of mentality. Again, you accept from the, from the, the land and the weather, what, what is given to you. And so yeah. I was, I learned what my parents um, learned, but again, I converted that into there's never enough. And so it wasn't just for me just being happy with what I have. It was, this is all I get. And so there's that sense of then kind of ties into my, my next belief of that it's better to give than it is to receive. Mm. Because at any point, regardless of what I have, I always have something to give. And I should always oh. have something to give. Yeah. Right. So it yeah. doesn't matter what I'm receiving. It's just like, it, it, it makes no sense. Even as I'm saying this out loud, it doesn't matter what I'm receiving. I'll, uh, as long as I just keep giving. But, you know, we never ask ourselves, well, what are we giving from? Right? If you're not filling yourself up, what are you giving from? And I think that's how we wear ourselves out. You know, I, again, I see my mom in particular having these kinds of um, beliefs and core beliefs and and modeling. Right, Mary, this is this is what we do. Um, th this is how we give, and this is how we give back, and um, this is how we show our value. We show our value by giving. Mm -hmm. uh, so those were core beliefs that really stuck with me and um, influenced how I saw money. Yeah. So one of my experiences with money was that when I started making money, because at, at first in education, you know, my first couple of years paying off school student loans and, and those sure. kinds of things. And then I moved into administration and all of a sudden my paycheck got fatter okay. and I could start buying some more things. And I had no habits of monitoring how much money is coming in, how much money is going out. It was if I wanted it, I got it kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I was $50,000 in credit card debt. Yikes. Oh my gosh. That feels like yeah. a lot to me. I don't know if it is to everyone else, but to me. 50,000 in debt on credit card. That's, that's significant. Yes. Yeah. And I had no idea, right. At the time I had no idea how I got there. All I knew is well, how, how am I going to do this? Um, this was at a time when you could get a uh, 0% interest rates on credit cards. Yep. Like every, every week in the mail, another offer would come in. Yeah, um, I so I took a uh, that I did that. I moved all of my my debt to the zero interest rate um, credit cards and paid it off. And that felt so empowering. Like it once I had the system set up, I, I you know I have it now, it's not costing me more money to have this money. Um, and here's how much money I'm gonna pay down. And here's how much money I'm willing to allow myself to pay spend now right? Because it's not just shutting everything off. I'm not just, again, denying myself anything else. Um, but, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's be intentional about how yeah. we I spend. I want to talk about that for a second, because I think a lot of people have that misconception that if we've gotten into a financial mess, and we have debt, and we have to pay it off, and we want to pay it off, because we're going, I want to be on top of this, I don't want to have this debt anymore. We think we have to restrict everything else or feel super guilty about everything else you know every every package of new socks that you buy is like oh I should have put that towards the debt you're like but my yep. other ones have holes like it's okay right. um so so that just that importance of saying here's my budget for things that I require to continue life as I know it and here's yeah. my budget for paying off debt and I don't have to deny 
every single thing to pay off the debt. I figure out what I'm going to put towards it. I've got a plan going. And then if I have a little bit extra this week or this month, I can go ahead and have, you know, the fancy coffee or see a movie or yeah. whatever, you know, so that you're not just hating life and like That's right. being miserable the entire time you're paying off the debt. Um, yep. I, I feel like when we fall into that trap of, I have to deny everything in order to pay something off, then it almost can make the debt worse because you get so frustrated not having any fun that you're yeah. like, screw it, I'm out. And you're just going to, and you go spend anyway. And then your debts, you know, back up another couple hundred dollars. And you're like, oh, I went backwards. Yeah, it gets right. worse. So right. yeah, I love that you said that. Yeah, it, it is so true. I mean, and I think back on that experience in my life and I, I literally have no angst about it at mm -hmm. all. Like I was, I didn't deny myself. In fact, I feel really empowered by it. Like I got myself into that situation and I got myself out of that situation. Nice. Yeah. And that felt really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. That's, that's fantastic. So then, so then what, then uh, what do you do after that? So my next uh, money story experience is um, I had always from, from when I remember in high school, I wasn't a super, I didn't really super apply myself in school. And so I wasn't really eligible for uh, scholarships and those kinds of things. And, and I had, for some reason, I decided to apply for Loyola University here in Chicago. Uh, again, I'm in Nebraska, living on the farm at the time. And um, I, I completed the application and I, I literally remember sealing it up, turning it over and saying, Mary, what are you doing? This is a private out-of-state tuition. You're going to be in education. Why are you going to go into debt just for a private school education in Chicago? Like, and I had no personal connection to this school, right? There was there were none of that. But I did say to myself, I need to get to Chicago though. And so I just made a commitment to myself that I don't know, somehow, some way, I'm going to end up in Chicago. Okay. And uh, so when I got married told my husband, here's the story. And so he was um, on his career track. He started to look for ways to move closer to Chicago. And we ended up living in Northwest Indiana for about 10 years, which is right across the border yep. um, in Indiana from Almost Chicago. There. Yeah. And then, um, and then we finally moved into the city. I had the sweetest penthouse condo in the loop in Chicago, two stories, 2,500 square feet um, on the top of this beautiful old building. And it was, it was like, okay, I, I, I love this. Like I, maybe this is what was bringing me to Chicago. Like this is where I really wanted to be. Yeah. And about two years after we moved in, my husband and I got a divorce. Oh, and this was right at around 2000, between 2008 and 2010, when the market was crushing, right? We were really looking at, we're going to have to take a loss on this. It's going to be a short sale. Um, lots of, just lots of drama around that whole experience. And um, I remember getting something in the mail uh, from the bank where our, our um mortgage was and we had two loans we had a balloon yeah. loan and a First standard second. loan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um there was this the message was something to the effect of this loan had been paid off now this was about a three hundred thousand dollar loan wow. and i the first thing that went through my mind is what is my ex-husband trying to do and how is you know how is how is he going to use paying off the loan against me i don't know but this doesn't feel right right yeah yeah right um, called the bank, said, what's going on? What happened to this loan? They said, we can't tell you anything other than this loan is, it has been paid off. Wow. And that meant, again, that went from a short sale to now we're going to be able to sell with profit. And, um, what happened was the bank what had gotten caught up in whatever the, the lawsuits were about making loans when they shouldn't have been making loans mm -hmm. and they were forgiving loans. I, I don't know what the uh, criteria was, but yeah. fortunately our loan happened to be one of them. And so my story that the conclusion that I came to about money out of that is Mary, you can manifest a penthouse, a condo 
without any effort at all. It just, it just showed up and it was at a price that we could afford. Right. And then shit happens. And now I don't want to be there anymore. Right. And, and, and so how, and I want to offload this, this um, condo, except now the market is terrible. I'm going to have to take it. I'm going to take a hit on this. And none of that happened. None of that happened. And so I just, going back to that idea, there's never enough. There's always enough. There's always enough. You don't, you don't even know where it's coming from. It's going to be a gift someday. The bank is going to send you a letter and say, we've just forgiven your $300,000 loan. Have a good day. <laughs> I need that letter. Send me that letter right now. Uh, I know. It, it was amazing. It, and it came right at Christmas time. I mean, it was just phenomenal. Yeah. And of course, you know, just wrapping up that whole relationship and all of those kinds of things too. It, it wasn't just that there was enough money. There was just, there's just enough of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that just kind of helped you do everything else you needed to do. You know, short sale a house means you lose money on it. And so now it's like, great, we each owe $50,000. And, you know, how can you get divorced when you both owe money? And then how do you split the rest of the stuff to deal with just like a nightmare of things? Right. went away with that one with one letter yeah with that one letter and then yeah. it's like okay you're now free to uh sell this house split the profit split up your yep. other stuff and move on that's exactly right yeah that's what a gift that is amazing yeah. and yeah 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 how, how fabulous of you to be able to just this is what i really need right now and here it shows up so. And, and, it, and I catch myself, yeah, and when I hear you say that, it sounds so easy. Like, why am I not always in that state of, it's just going to show up? Mm-hmm. Um, because that was probably 10, 12 years ago, um, and probably 10 years ago. And now it's, and, and I am much more in that space now of, I expect good things to come to me, right? That redoing right. that, that belief of it's better to give than receive. I'm, yeah. I'm allowing myself to receive uh, now at this point. And again, I think that that experience was one of those big experiences that says, Mary, you can, you can, re- you can accept this loan forgiveness. Yeah. Well, if I can f- accept that, then I can accept anything. Right. That That's I want, important. that I want. <laughs> that you want. Yeah. You don't have to accept things if you don't. Want That's right. That. That's okay. right. Yeah. yeah. So talk more about this um, concept because we, I think everybody's heard this at some point, the it's better to give than to receive. I don't, I don't know exactly how that got started, but right. it's very, you, you wrote in your description when we were planning the episode that it's sneaky and I'm yes. like, it is sneaky because it's wonderful to be a giver but mm-hmm. then it tricks you if you fall into the trap of thinking that you are not worthy of receiving. Right. So talk about that a little bit. How how have you fallen into that and gotten yourself back out? Um, the way that I realized what that that belief was, right? That that it's okay to give, but it's not okay to receive. And I finally was able to question it was because I was doing my coaching program and and we were um, were able to deliver an assessment. And this assessment kind of measures your point, your perceptions and marks it on a scale of on the one end, life is happening to me. On the other end, life is happening for me. And we've got all these levels. And on the upper end, um, on level four, the level is called compassion. And it's all about uh, when we're living in that state, it is all about giving. And I literally pushed that assessment aside probably for more than seven years because I could not reconcile with that particular level. Because to me, I've seen my mom and other women in my families just continue to give and give and give until they have nothing left to give. And then they give a little bit more and come back tomorrow and and they'll give a little bit more. And I didn't, I couldn't reconcile that experience with this level. And then what I realized after I was able to come back to it, what I see happening when we are in this space of where it's better to give than to receive to me, there's always a sense of lack under there. There's a sense of I'm not enough. So I'm just going to keep giving to you just to prove to you, maybe even prove to me that I am enough. 
Mm-hmm. And since that evidence will never be solid enough for me, I'm just going to be constantly in that state. So that really falls into that that uh, other end of this uh, continuum where life is happening to me. So life is happening to me. I'm in this state where I have to keep giving in order to prove my value. And so I'm going to keep doing that. It's an unhealthy practice. But again, because everybody else benefits from it, almost nobody ever says, stop doing that. Yeah. Right. And so, so now, well, now when I see this, the sense of giving to me, the giving has to be, I, to be authentic, the giving has to be without any expectations of getting anything in return. That's why I'm giving at that level four. That's what that means. Now that means that I'm giving not from a space of of scarcity or lack. I'm giving because I have it. I have enough. So because I have enough, I have enough to share with you as well. Mm -hmm. And so when I was able to see how giving again, that sneaky little thing thought that's what, what brought was a way that for me to express value was actually a way for me to deny my value. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's super powerful. And I love that, that you were able to figure out that the giving is trying to prove something, trying to prove that you were enough, trying to prove that you could do it all properly and that people should think that you are awesome, even though on the inside, you're super scared that everyone thinks the opposite. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it does, you know, I, I, I've felt this so many times in various things with gift giving and, you know, people setting up parties and events and, oh, I have to do this and we have to have one of these and I have to have, you know, little perfect packages to go out to everybody afterwards. And I have to send this gift or this card or this thing or whatever. And I'm just like, that is a lot. It is. I don't think I have to, I don't think you have to do any of those things. Like you could, you know, if you want, sure, but you don't have to. And just what you're pointing out of sometimes people feel they, they must give in order to be worthy Mm -hmm. And you're worthy without having to give anything. You're just worthy. It's okay. Yes. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so much better to give when you don't have an expectation attached to it. You don't, you know, you came to my thing. So I give you something and then I go to your thing and then you give me something and we have to like keep exchanging. Fair exchange is definitely a thing, but that is not it. (laughs) Yes. You know, actually, I don't know if you were a fan of Big Bang, Oh, but do, re- do you remember Sheldon didn't ever want any birthday gifts because then that yes. would require him. Re- to- it's an obligation that now it's an obligation for the birthday. Yes. And he must do one of commensurate size and value and importance. <laughs> exactly. and whole, the one with the gift gift item bath hypothesis. Yes. I love that episode. It's fabulous. Uh, yes. But that's a Christmas gift. And yes, the same, the same thing. Like it's just, yeah. yeah, it gets out of control. It does control. So, so much better, like you said, to just give and expect nothing in return and don't give because you feel that you have to, or you need to, or you've got to prove something. Just go, I would love to share this. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. That's super, super beautiful. This is awesome. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. This is so fun. Yes. I'm so grateful. Um, how has this impacted your business? So, you know, in, in your, in your coaching practice, like how, how was, did you struggle with this when you started? Cause I know a lot of entrepreneurs listen to the show and they're probably thinking, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I think too, for, so for me coming into entrepreneurship was um, making a, a shift from a career in public education to entrepreneurship. And so there was a lot to learn in there. And when there's a lot to learn, right, there's a lots of opportunities for your, for that inner chatter to say, what are you doing? What makes you think you can do this? You're not good enough. You know, all of that chatter. And that's, that's what I love about entrepreneurship, right? Because it is a space where you always have to grow because if you're not growing, your business isn't growing. Right. And so being in that space, um, and having that experience of this crap coming up gives me an opportunity. All right, it's time to finally address this. 
So let's finally address this so that we can move on from it. Now, it doesn't happen. I, I hesitate to say this. It doesn't happen quickly. It can happen quickly. It doesn't usually happen quickly for me. Yeah. Um, I'm a, I, I can be a stubborn learner sometimes. Mm-hmm. and think that, you know, the way that I had it going was just fine, even though all the evidence is points to the contrary. <laughs> I um, um, feel like I'm a little bit attacked right now. Because <laughs> I may or may not have a lot of uh, personal experience with exactly what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like a lot. Well, and, and that's what I want to talk about this, because I, I have not yet... I, I haven't really spoken to anyone who says, well, that was, I never had that experience. Right. right? And if they right, did, right. I think they'd be lying. Yeah. <laughs> but that's me judging. So I'll, I'll try not okay. to judge, okay. but, you won't do but, that. but for now, how is this showing up in my business? Well, first of all, that whole idea of never enough was, was something, it wasn't just about money, just being enough. Am I enough as a coach? Do I know enough? Do I, do I have enough resources to do what I want to do? Yeah. Um, so that, that was definitely one. Um, and then this giving it versus receiving, I have had, in, in fact, this is in the last three months, I've had my coach and my colleagues that I mastermind with every week saying, Mary, stop giving shit away. You are better than that. Yeah. Stop doing it because I kept looking for what's the next free thing I could do, or what's the next thing I could do that would, you know, be really easy for people to have access to. And right. it's like, no, you're diminishing yourself to some variable that you don't even know, right? Because yeah. it's in my head, what yeah. I think other people might need. Um, and it wasn't about them. It was about me. And do I believe in what I do for my clients? Yeah. And when they pushed back on me and said, Mary, stop giving things away, mm-hmm gave me the opportunity to go back. Why do I feel like I need to give things away? Well, I need to give things away to prove that I'm good at what I do. Yeah. No, I already have enough. I already have enough of that evidence. Yeah. Um, I can feel it. I know it. Uh, And so that shift has made a huge difference, a huge difference not just in the the outcomes, but in the process along the way, because up until that point when I, no, I, I am good enough. I, I do have enough. I have enough value to offer. When I accepted that, then I am not chasing around day, you know, during my days, like, oh, what's the next thing I got to do? I got to get the social media thing out there. And, you know, it, it runs at a hundred miles an hour and everything that I've got to do, I've got to do something more. Right. And when I made the shift, like, no, you're enough literally everything has slowed down. Yeah, It has slowed down. I've got more clarity. And I believe that even my clients uh, recognize that I have settled into this space. And um, it's just when I'm in this space, because what I do is so personal, right? The work that I do with my clients, if I'm not comfortable, how am I creating a, a comfortable space for my clients? Right, right. So yeah, me it. having to get right with me is not only allowing me to receive the the clients that I'm looking for, uh, but it's also allowed me to show up for them even more authentically than I have in the past. That's beautiful. I love it. What are you most excited about right now? Well, I literally um, just doing a rebrand and this rebrand is um, my way of re-articulating what I do, how I do it, who I do it for. Um, so my new website is bluebambooleadership.com. Okay. And um, I have been so fortunate to have been able to work with my web designer. We did uh, some bartering. So he got to experience my coaching so then he was able to help me articulate nice. the what I do, the value of what I do. And, and so now I feel like I can really talk about it. So I'm really not just excited about the website, but I'm excited about what that represents. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's one thing. And what that, you know, what the website is all about is really inviting entrepreneurs who are in this space where all these old beliefs, right, are just churning in the background and, and eating up energy that um, keeps us from really doing the things that we know that we need to do and even want to do. Right. Because when we have so much of that going in the background, taking so much of our energy, we don't have the energy 
or the clarity of thought to to take intentional actions. And so we end up just doing stuff. And maybe sometimes that stuff is the right thing. Maybe, or, you know, the right thing, meaning it's moving us forward. Right. Maybe right. not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. more yeah. of a, um, a treadmill uh, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I'm excited about the website um, showcasing what I do. Um, and so I'm, I'm really thrilled about that. Yay. That is so cool. So we will link uh, your website in the show notes yeah. so that yep. everyone can find that. And then uh, if you want to connect with Mary, you can also find her link tree. Um, it's Mary underscore Maduna underscore gross. And of course, we'll link that in the show notes as well. So super easy to find her and follow up and get in touch with her, see all her programs and everything else that is going on. So there's a awesome. lot there. There's a lot there. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and thank you as well to all of our listeners and viewers. I'm your host, Camille Diaz. I'm a business optimization coach, financial educator, author, and speaker. You can contact me and find out what I'm up to through my website, CamilleDiaz.com, and follow me on social media at Cam Unfiltered. Be sure to follow Money Heart at Money Heart Show, and our website is MoneyHeartShow.com. Mary, would you like to share today's money mantra? I am ready for today's money mantra. And that is, I am worthy of all the riches that I desire. Yes, because there's always enough. Always right? enough. So you're totally worthy of all of them. Well, it's yes. Never going to run out. That's exactly. fabulous. Thank you so much. Thank you, Camille. 